see. This, in particular for GPK, this is a hero that he had a lot of success on in the third tour with the Tiny. He's a very big fan of treads into the blink and personally a build that I'm favoring currently. We've had a couple of mid-Tiny games so far where they've gone like Phase Brutes blink and they just haven't been able to scale. I think that treads just allows that a little bit easier, helps your farming uh, potential as well. Uh, sorry, and your mana pool too, which is nice. And for GPK though, this man does not rotate until he gets blink, but he will be able to farm treads blink in 10 minutes. I've seen him do that two games in a row in uh, in the DPC. So this is something that you know, he believes is the right way to play tiny. And we'll see if he's going to be able to hit the timing that he has done so in the past. Because if he can get them at the early stage, he can prove to be a really big issue. Yeah, and, you know, I don't think your side lanes necessarily need those early rotations, so I like the idea of just, yeah, you know, focus on your own game, set yourself up for success. Tell your supports, hey, oh, you want me to, to fight? Come to me, then we'll fight. Like, the supports will be the ones rotating to the tiny, trying to set him up to have a good game to grab those power runes, and then you can, you know, worry about helping out your Doom, your Morphling later on once you have a blink, because you're just so much more impactful with that blink dagger. Uh, we have seen this matchup multiple times so far. And every time it is Entity that have come out on top against Betboom, of course. Got to keep in mind, Pure, it's his old team as well. So they've only played once, and that was at the Lima Major. Um, recently with that change. Let's see if once again it will go Entity's way, if they can get a little bit of revenge. First Pure himself. Yeah, that's uh, at least maybe a bit of a mental advantage for, for Entity and uh, we're kind of getting that point for Entity where they need to, you know, start picking up some of those wins. We talk about the importance of some of these some of these games, some of these series. Entity, not quite mathematically eliminated, but 2-8. and eight, Got to imagine they almost have to walk away with a 2-0 if they want to have a chance to make it into Phase 2 of Dream League Season 20. GPK has eight losses. Confess <laughs> the two. Casual. So he, yep. He's bodying mid. That I mean, GPK mechanically. That no one's ever doubted this man's mechanical skill. I'll tell you that. Just the just the other things that unfortunately still have to come with Dodo as well. So, let's see if his start's going to continue. I'm very intrigued in how this top lane's going to go as well. We've seen the the off lane Wyvern work, of course, just recently in that previous game. How about the Pudge as a 4-2? Because if Betboom... Oh, sorry, if anyone's going to know how this one's able to fare, it is Betboom. I think Save is definitely top three of the Pudge 4s out there. Yeah, um, absolutely. He's probably, yeah, <laughs> during the draft, like, okay, Nightfall, watch out for this. This is what's going to come your way. But, you know, I also think most, most pro players these days have seen enough Pudges in their pub games that, you know, it's something they're not going to be too phased about. I just don't really see enough to really give Morphling any issues in this lane. Uh, it really feels like a, a lane where Morphling's just going to have such a free time. Hasn't even need to go for the waveform, just going for the early adaptive just to secure those last hits and be annoying. It looks like, yeah, so far Morphling just, just free farming away. <laughs> so two with the Deucer as well, bottom here for Watson. It's opted for the, the Bassy with the full stats. So he's having a pretty good time. He's got a full wave under his tower as well. And I don't think this is a lane where he might be pressured. Not early on, though. Maybe once you're able to get a couple more levels in the Scorch Earth. But the nice thing is at least you should have Fishman to be a, a disruptor. Is actually top. It's only me. And his hook onto Nightfall, but it's only really just a little bit of poke damage. No real threat there. Yeah, I mean, Nightfall even got a last hit on his way. I was like, I am running away, but I'm also getting a last hit while I run away. So he did not definitely did not feel like he was under, in too much danger. And yeah, going for the no waveform build as it's not really needed. That's just how confident he feels in this lane. Another hook attempt from Katomi. This one off the mark and they're going to push back here. Maybe thinking about a glimpse back, but yeah, they're going to go for it. And they should have the damage as well. Yep. That is going to be rewarded. Gets level three and he's actually gone for two points adaptive strike build. So I like how it's not your stock standard, like, max out attribute shift. And even before the change with some of the Agi going over to the Adaptive Strike, we saw that wasn't the case. So it's a little bit more specific depending on the lane. 
Yeah, I think the freer the lane, the more you can get adaptive strike. And this, this to me speaks to how easy he feels like this lane is. I mean, he's free farming. He's just using the adaptive strike to play aggressive, to get last hits. I know that with the wand and the raindrop, he's got a lot of mana sustain, so he can actually use that adaptive strike pretty consistently. Um, and it's just giving him all these extra early last hits. Storms on the mid lane. Plus back onto the tower, even shield crashed a little bit further into the tower range, so... Let's take a little bit of damage, but he's able to get that water rune, so should repair a decent chunk of it. Has also clawed his way back into a, a pretty decent position as well in regards to the last hits. Yeah. I and mean, this is classic Pango lanes, like, yeah, the first wave or two doesn't go well, but once you start getting levels up in your nukes, the lane only is going to get easier and easier, and not much you can do about it as a tiny, again. although... Tomi is going to try and get as much damage as he can Wait. before he dies. Maybe Tomi can get the return kill with the glimpse. Dust out a little bit too late from Toronto, Tokyo. So it will be a one for one. Both cores rewarded with the kill. Yep. Well, we've seen these games where like both carries are kind of free farming. If one lane is getting, mm -hmm. your carry is getting kills, it just feels like you can walk away with a ton of farm. Bottom here. Ooh, goes down to the last tick of damage and a nice find for, for entity down bottom. That's a huge nuke. Two points up in the, the snake along with the, the brain sap just caught him off guard there. So something he needs to now consider. And yeah, he's going to do so. Looks like raindrops is something that he's wanting to, to bring back to the lane. Unfortunately, doesn't have enough gold for it. So maybe in a little bit of trouble again if they can continue to spam so the spell is out from Entity. So we'll sorry for the morphling. He's chewing through his raindrops quickly, but... We're getting a lot of value out of this item and he's just yeah continuing to free farm away disruptor not even needed to kind of secure his lane anymore as toronto tokyo is making moves around mid more looking just to kind of fight over these power runes as six minute approaches both teams want to try get that for their mid laner looks already going to be on cooldown though for katomi so it might make it a little bit more difficult to contest well fishman secures it for storm stormer no level 6 swashbuckle through the coddle. Helps with a little bit of extra damage. And now he's got the 6 to work with. And also looks like he's going to be going down the orb of corrosion route as well. Yep. 50-50 on the rune going the way of Entity. Coddle was trying to just throw away his life to like deny the rune there. But wasn't to be. And yep. Nice little find. Good little start for, for Entity now. Having a, the trading the carry free farm, but getting the slight edge with the mid lane. And getting some good rotations on early. Nightfall may be in some trouble here. Oh, nice hook. Katomi drags him back. He's only got a little bit of one charge to work with, but they will be lacking the damage though. Nonetheless, they'll still put a lot of pressure onto him. No rotations are forced out, because meanwhile, Bepum, they need to try and address Fishman, who wants to steal the wisdom away, but... Now he's in a position where he needs to deny himself, tries to get... Oh, he does? No way. Oh my <laughs> god. I was going to say, like, maybe well the fairy done. fire timing was enough to, to put him in range for it, and in the end he gets to deny, so pretty nicely done. That's three heroes of Beth Boomer trying to get the kill. Yeah, definitely. Definition of space creator there. You're perfectly happy with that one, and, you know, things... You know, go at a bit of a slow pace here, which means the supports, you can kind of make those kind of plays here. They'll probably have to come back to mid lane again. Eight minute power runes. This is always go time. Ooh, attempted hook. Nightfall read that one. And Kadomi now in some trouble. And Nightfall's... Ooh, not another deny. Oh my lord. What's going on? Not a deny. On? Okay. These... These... Entity supports just know how to keep gold out of the enemy hands, it seems. <laughs> Around GPK, hoping for a top rune, he gets it. So the rune equilibrium, one each. 50-50 being one one time apiece. And neither team really pulling ahead just yet. For Bet Boom, it is kind of that slow start where you kind of mentioned, like, GPK is just going to prioritize farming up that blink before making any aggressive moves. And he is going to have it in two to three minutes at this rate. Should be a great time for him. Uh, gonna make the attempt. <laughs> you deny. Even me. I don't know, man. There's something about it. Something about these denies. You can reaction. A little bit of a chuckle. 
I love it. The, the deny highlight reel. <laughs> Production on point. I had that one ready to go. <laughs> we'll hopefully, hopefully add a few more to the, the collection before we're done with this game, but... Um, yeah, Bet Boom. Let's see what the next moves are going to be. I, I mean, I don't really have any big moves until Tiny gets Blink, it feels like. I mean, GPK is just farming up the jungle, sticking around mid. The supports are just rotating for power rune, so... At least until that Blink is up, it seems like both teams are just going to be playing things a bit more passively. Storm Stormer on the Pengo, not looking to make any moves himself. Happy to kind of engage in this farm trade as well. Do you feel like there's a side that is a little bit happy with just the farm fest we currently have through the first 10 minutes? I, I don't think so necessarily. I mean, I think entity slightly because they're just getting more farm so like you're having this farm trade and like medusa morphling and medusa's just getting a bit more pango's also been out farming um the, the tiny now just with the the nuke spam and farming the jungle so um at the same time i don't think this is something you could kind of prevent this bet boom it really just comes down to how much you whether or not you can you know claw back the gold lead once you get uh blink dagger up so mm. i think i'll a lot of that gold lead is just off the, the rougher lane that Pure had, which I'm honestly quite surprised by. Maybe this is just the the double nuke potential. I mean, that was how they were able to get the kill prior on that first attempt, and now it's really struggled since then. So looks like he's avoided the Vanguard on Pure, just uh, looking to try and rush the Midas. So with him applying no pressure in the lane means that Watson, this is just your class. I and mean, we see so many safe laners do it. Shove the lane, go back, farm the two camps behind the tower. And you are able to skyrocket. They're not making any stacks so for Watson, which I would like to see, but it is a little bit more difficult for melee supports. Yeah, that's one of the things with the, the Morph versus Medusa matchup is Morph doesn't quite have the farming speed of Medusa early on. I mean, really at most stages, but Morphling, you've just got that strength of like, hey, nobody can kill me, nobody can bully me out of your lane, whereas you're hoping your team could maybe pressure the Medusa a bit more, but because of the, you know, the Doom pick that you didn't really play or draft or try and pressure that bottom lane it really feels like bet boom's just aiming for a, a slower game where they get to kind of scale into the late game like yeah you're up against the karen medusa but they probably feel good about the fact they've got three scaling cores here yeah without a doubt we'll see if they're going to be able to get to that stage so it's finally we've got a smoke up and gpk has an arcane in the bottle to play with the blink reveal and this is now going to start to get to a scary stage where they can go one by one glimpse back onto the winter wyvern Katomi's in a pretty good position to help him get back to safety thanks to the hook. But they are not done just yet. Keep in mind, this is still the arcane that GPK's working with, so the cooldowns are shorter. And with the blast from downtown, they're going to go for Katomi next. And still, look at the spells, man. Oh. Three rounds of av up tosses means that GPK and co. can help get a triple kill up top. Yeah. I mean, to go back to your question of who's happy with the game state, the game state, it's whoever gets that 10 minute arcane rune, it seems, because that was just a monstrous pickup, lowering the cooldown <laughs> of your combo, and he's still got arcane rune here. Very he just got cute. Four uh, kills with this arcane rune. Did he toss Tokyo closer so he could get the glimpse back? Very, very Ooh. cute play from GPK. He is. I, I, I never want to say best, so I'll just say top three, but there's an argument for him being the best tiny out there. And it's super scary now because you've got a coddle to pair with him, so you are never going to run out of mana. You have that battery. He is going to have an incredible game now on the tiny. Yeah, this coddle just sets him up to absolutely snowball out of control. He's top. He's on the, over the on top of the Medusa in terms of overall farm. And there is, you know, room for this Tiny to be that kind of physical damage core as well. Has the Echo Saber queued up and almost completed. So not just this, like, run around, kill everybody kind of Tiny. It's a Tiny that can become a, a true carry as well alongside the Morphling. That's a, a classic watch back there for, for GPK. So much pressure was able to provide and... Might even see that once again. Is this time the combo is going to be on to two? Storm Stormer. Also Swashbuckle defensively. They will be able to disrupt the Rolling Thunder. He's super hesitant. He will be okay. Get some separation. GPK still ready to go with the blink up. Does he find an angle though? A little bit hesitant about continuing to dive. 
Yeah, decides just to throw some nukes at some creeps here, so it seems like they want to play things carefully. Overcommitting against the Pango Rolling Thunder here could be a really bad idea, even with Pango as low as he was, so... They play it safe and just reset. Probably, yeah, looking for another smoke here. They are trying to bait these power runes. Unfortunately, it spawns bottom, so... No one's going to be going for it immediately, but maybe they can actually bait Pengo, who is TPing in mid. Oh, he's going for it. And they've got the Static Storm as well to lay it down for that little bit of extra control in the hopes that he can survive. Do they have the damage? They do. Once again, save there with the refresh. So another round of GPK spells. It's another kill to the tally, and they're not even done just yet because GPK sees another freebie. How do you play the map now? With how fast Betbroom are, they're going to try and react. A couple of TPs are coming in. Nightmare will mitigate some of the damage, but the curse from Toby is too late. Watson's going to get glimpsed away as well. But it looks like it's not going to matter in the end. A big kill for Enti to find. He might be able to get one more, but once the creeps can act as a bodyguard for Toronto, Tokyo. I think that still feels so good for, for GPK, even dying there. You're just like, these guys, you know, I'm, I'm like, you're in your, they're in their head. You just, you know, gotten a couple more kills. You killed their mid Pango with a nice little room bait. Then you dove a support and like four heroes came mid to kill you. And you know that you're more flings free farming. Your doom's getting some alone time to catch up with a Midas. So definitely a death that GPK probably feels not too bad about as Bet Boom suddenly find themselves 2k gold ahead. All it took, this tiny blink dagger just was such a catalyst for their early game that they were down 1k gold in the lanes and suddenly they're up 3k gold. It is crazy though how far Watson is, so we'll see if he's going to be able to hit that two item spike we see so often for the Dusa. Will be once again the butterfly getting worked on after the Manta. And I wonder what he's going to look to try and do to address the eventual scepter we see out of Nightfall. You've got your... Potential Lincolns. I'll actually hold that because pure bottom lane. Atos should be able to ease the setup for the hook. They got a couple more control out of the ultimates as well. It just helped guarantee the kill. So with everyone showing bottom from Entity, Bet Boom, they're probably going to look for their own play as well. We'll see what that play is. There's no real easy target. Medusa's hugging a tower, so you'd love to kill the Medusa. It looks like they may just come in, take over a bit of map control around the enemy ancients here, but a, a really nice move from Entity. I love that play down bottom, getting a tower plus the Doom kill. Probably just a part of the map that here should not have been playing around. Watson goes for the style points with the man to dodge. Almost got it off there with the glimpse, but he's got the boys playing over to the right side. And it seems like Bet Boom are kind of aware of something fishy is going on. So they're not going to try and defend the tower. Yeah, kind of that point in the game where Medusa just feeling a little bit too far for them to initiate on. They want to really jump the supporting cast and the heroes behind the Medusa, but without vision, without smokes, not too easy to do, and they're just not really quite ready to fight. Like, at this point, you got to be thinking, like, you know, we need, like, Morphling and Doom kind of need to be online as well if we want to take a fight that they're building around the Medusa, and those heroes, like, you've just got the Crimson, your Morphling's got a Lincolns, but these are heroes that really shine like around that kind of more like 20 to 25 minute mark with their item timings. Fish member run into Nightfall. A little awkward Nightfall, so we get the way form away. Now bottom lane, need to be looking as Toby. He's gonna be the target as GPK finds the jump. No one is nearby to get the toss back. He's gonna try and target the creeps instead. He's close enough to the tier 1 tower that Entity will be able to react in time to keep him alive. A Storm Stormer to the rescue. But the Static Storm lay it down. It's going to stop the Winter's Curse. If they got the damage, though, Toby will finally go down. Can they get anything more out of it, though, Bet Boom? Limps has already been used. They will be able to run into Watson. This is a big target. Hook. Drags him away to the left side, but they're still ready to go from Bet Boom. They need the vision for the glimpse. Tokyo will find it. Drag back though. Oh, this time the Manta dodge Watson. Oh, that is life or death, and he'll make sure he lives to see another day. Yeah, even GPK respecting that one gives him the little tip there. I mentioned these are the fights. Like, you want to try to force these fights? If you're Bet Boom, you need to start bringing in your farming cores, your Morphling, as well as your Doom. Uh, you know, not the most, like, crazy impact doom but even just getting on the pango there meant he couldn't keep casting spells after the rolling thunder wore off so they it allowed them to just commit onto medusa 
It would have been a kill if not for a, a, a very spectacular Manta Dodge, but Betboom, despite not getting that Medusa kill, still find themselves gaining ground and building up a bigger and bigger lead. Yeah, and we see how scary it is when the initial start of the fight doesn't go well for Entity. As soon as they use spells and they're on the retreat, there's just no hope for them to turn it back around. You've got Disruptor to keep dragging you back, constant spam of tiny spells. You, a Doom can easily chase you down as well with the Scorched Earth at this stage, because, and it, it doesn't seem like it's going to get any easier, because we see bottom lane, Katomi once again, it's just, it's GPK and save. Just this yep. duo every time. It does not seem like they have left each other's side. Yeah, he gets the much needed D ward to kind of, you know, limit maybe some follow up aggression from Bet Boom, but feels like the damage is somewhat already being done and they just haven't been able to really put together a team fight on the entity side. Like the, the Pango rolling thunder hasn't really felt like this big threat. He's gone for the Ag Scepter as his follow up into the Diffusal, which will give him a ton of extra stats, survivability, and even some damage output if he can kind of like land these rolling thunders. But Bet Boom are just really kiting and picking and choosing their fights and limiting what storm Stormer can do so does feel like he's gonna almost certainly need a blink dagger after this ag scepter just out of range so a couple of heroes should dump bottom uh you do have this net worth lead continuing to go from bet boom and really the only one at the moment finding farm is watson who is getting a lot of it but we might see if some of the fights continue to go the way of Bet Boom, then you might have a difficult time of, of this wyvern and scaling. Yeah, the Winter's Curse this game gonna be gonna be a little tricky. The more thing with the Lincolns and just in general, like you know, there's a, a couple of melee cores in the tiny and the doom, but they're not really great Winter's Curse targets. Very different is like what we saw last game with the Winter Wyvern from Team Liquid, where it was a dream wyvern game for Zai, so. We'll see what Wyvern can do. He's looking for some of that right-click scaling. Has gone for the Dragonlance over some of our options we've seen here. I guess yeah, the real big value, the only value maybe that I see at least with the curse is just to disengage away from Doom. Um, that's really the, the one thing I can see so far with it. So, yeah, It's also it's maybe like in... one of the better ways to start a fight. Mm -hmm. that GPK. Finds a jump. Q is going to be in with the Doom as well. It's a little bit awkward because Nightfall waveform defensively and he's stuck in the trees. So they won't have the Morphling for the damage. It looks like it's really going to matter as well as Watson. He'll shrug off the Doom. They'll turn it back around as Fishman holds the Doom into place. Nightfall though, he wants a little bit of revenge. Trying to get over the top. Still, it's a good start for Entity. They've been able to waste some of the key ultimates from Bet Boom. And now Dia look very hesitant about continuing on with this fight. They want to chase. They want to try and punish and get some more here, but yeah, just an unfortunate <laughs> initiation there. Nightfall being in those trees. Don't know if it would have given them damage to kill the deuce. It would have definitely been close, but with the butterfly, probably Watson can survive that regardless, but just having Morphling out, I mean, it's not even about killing the Medusa. There was also a Bane who got Static Storm that they couldn't finish off, so just a pretty big deal here, and if they get a Roshan out of that, that's yeah. huge for Entity. That's a... Bit of a lifeline that they've been throwing here because all the momentum has been going Bet Boom's way until that fight. Let's see if they can read it. No one's farming mid. I have no deep observer though inside the Radiant Jungle. So it might be a little bit more difficult for them to get an understanding that this Roche is going on. Maybe they can't even fight if they know. Like you said, yeah. ultimate's down, so it's free Roche thinking on some level is probably a conscious decision where it's like if they're roaching we can't do anything about it let's we don't have any map control any vision over there and uh, ultimates being down is just too big a deal against this medusa who's really starting to hit her stride now a couple thousand net worth on top of the morphling and going to be halfway towards Escati as well so things are looking very playable for the entity draft now yep. but a lot of useful tools now if they can really continue to scale which they will do so like the wyvern with the the hurricane pike the pango with a ton of stats like you know, we always joke and highlight all these universal heroes but they, the damage is going to not just come from the medusa in these mid to late game fights it, it's a lot of damage from pango wyvern as well 
And, and just importantly, it seems like that Aegis should at least get them there. Like, maybe they don't get too many objectives off the back of the four minutes they have, but it's just... It's time where Bet Boom are just not swarming into their face and, and stopping their farm. In fact, Entity, they're going to get a T2 and a Tormentor as well. So you've got the Ag Shard now on the Pudge, which is a save. So that could be that could be quite nice against someone that... I, I mean, I guess to save against a Glimpse, right? If you can someone away, you can you can eat yep. them. Maybe against the Doom target as well to give them a couple of seconds of space. Interesting. Both teams getting the enemy enemy Tormentor here as Bepboom going to make the same play up top. Take over the, the Tormentor and get the Shard themselves. This one going to the Keeper of the Light, but they've got to defend their high ground. The question's being asked, like, hey, can you deal with an Aegis Deuce? Because we're going to come knocking on your door. Mm. Okay, the, at least the read that some heroes are back. Uh, Entity happy with that. They have a lot of farm across the map. Mid and top is shoved in. It's too enticing for them to miss. Storm Storm is going to TP back the rest of the team. We'll even be able to connect just in case Bet Boomer out on the map. But plenty of time to them continue to knock on some of these objectives. What's the call now for Bet Boom? We saw in the previous fight, for them it was just to use their ultimates onto Watson, take him out of the engagement. And now with the second life, that is a big way to counter these key cooldowns. Do you want to jump instead? Well, inside the tree line, just a measly illusion. So they will reveal their positioning and it's going to mean that Entity will want to play to the right side now, potentially knowing that there is a, a cliff water as well. And they also want to wait out this ultimate timing of Nightfall with the Morph Replicate. Yeah, it feels like they've already gotten quite a lot of this Aegis. It is a gold league still going Bet Boom's way, but that's, you know, often the nature of just, you know, Doom and Midas and stuff. You've got three farming cores on Dire. As long as Medusa stays top of the net worth, you're feeling like, you know, this game is still in an okay place for Entity. Pangalee scaling very well. It's just the Wyvern who's a little bit behind in terms of the, the cores really will come down to some of these big ultimates and how you can land them. The Winter's Curse as well as the Rolling Thunder. The Bet Boom looking just to stall out this Aegis before they try and force another fight. Oh, turn to Thank you. Okay. It's a glimpse back, but Storm Storm is right. And pings out this award there as well, so they will reveal that freshly placed Observer Ward. Top there we go. There's a D-Ward. Now you get a minute 20 still left to work with, so... Once <laughs> again, showcasing. Yeah, you can, uh, you can find these cute glimpse players. So, man to dodge players. UPK, that's the real one. Under the tier 4 tower as well. Can they burn his life without committing too heavily in regard to the ultimates? So, where Katomi is able to come into play. Hook, eat him up. Get him out of danger. Yeah, just... <laughs> they have a very good understanding. I mean, having this Pudge is actually... You know, the reposition on Medusa can sometimes cause some problems with the Tiny Tossback, but you've got the Pudge to kind of negate it. Now with the Ag Shard as well. You've got a second tool for it, so there wasn't even... It didn't even feel like there was a slight moment of panic. Often you see, like, a Tossback in and suddenly, like, several heroes are charging forward, like, oh, we're going to help out our, our carry. The entire energy team just sat back and chilled, like, no, no, it's fine. We'll get this off. 20 seconds on ages. Storm Storm is actually going to look to go in. We'll start the fight aggressively, but Rolling Thunder sets up for the hook. Katoma is going to be able to drag back GPK, but the Static Storm allows him to buy some time and get the BKB off. But it... Bet Boom, what's the call now? Ages out shortly. Pure is going to try and find the jump. The Doom's on the Medusa. They're going to be able to stop the Ages. Health coming back, but it's a beautiful curse. Enables the retreat, and it helps get the kill off to Pure as well. Nightfall, though, will still have a free fight. He gets a revenge on one. Wants to turn to Toby next as well. As the Winter Wyverns caught out inside the river. Storm Stormer comes in to try and protect him. Toby will TP out to safety. Storm Stormer, though. Who else does he have to play with? Fishman considering about entering in. Beanscrit was still at the ready. But Bet Boom, they'll buy them some respect and look to back on off. What a beautiful curse though from Toby. Yeah, I, I was not expecting this to be a game where the Winter's Curse could have like a huge impact in terms of like getting kills with heroes next to each other, but that's about as good as it gets. And getting a core kill with it next to the Morphling was absolutely perfect. They 
managed to bail up the Medusa who got doomed there as well without the Aegis. So all in all, a pretty perfect team fight for Entity who got a lot out of that Aegis and now it's up to Bet Boom. Maybe going to be look interested in making some kind of smoke, aggressive smoke plays now that this Aegis has worn off. They probably want to try and push the Temple a bit, but without a Doom, it's kind of tricky to do. It is kind of tricky to do, but still, you've. Are you fine with wanting to try and make plays though on Bet Boom? Like we've mentioned multiple times, like this is a lineup that will still be very scary as this game goes on. So can you not just kind of play this one a little bit more passively and go for the farm game? I don't think they necessarily like straight up outscale just by default. Um, I mean, definitely like, you know, the fact they have like Doom and you can get maybe like refreshes and stuff late game can be amazing, but, um, and Tiny is also this. Scaling core, but I think the same applies on both sides. Like Wyvern, like Universal Hero. The thing is, I think Bet Boom's heroes just get farmed more efficiently. Like, you know, Wyvern and Pengo are behind on net worth. Wyvern, especially, is never going to be able to keep up with the other five cores this game. So that's probably where Bet Boom's okay with slowing this game down, just because they can farm more efficiently, even on the supporting cards. Coddle, 10k net worth. This is a hero that gets a ton of yeah. farm uh, and can really build up some gold and useful utility items. So um, a solo game is probably fine, but I think definitely around like the Aegis respawn is when we're going to want to see Bet Boom kind of make that move out on the map to not give Medusa potential to get like another Aegis on Medusa could just be what Entity need to kind of close out this game around 35 minutes by going high ground. Well, they want to make sure she doesn't get to that stage is Bet Boom. Going to smoke up. It's GPK leading the charge. They're inside the river though, so don't have this high ground position to be able to potentially catch Entity off Garden. They'll see a blast as well, so instantly Entity look to smoke. Gonna make sure they don't get caught off guard without the vision. They've got a pretty good ward to play with around the secret shop there. It looks like they're starting to path on over. Oh, it's so much information. They say save. This is a big target. Heavily enables GPK inside the fights once again. It's the Thunder to be able to set up for the hook. And now Storm Summer will look over to the right side as well. Wanted to try and disrupt the backline. It's not a clean initiation, a save. He'll go down, but it takes him a little bit too long. Bet Boom have reacted and turned it into one for one. Is now GPK is looking for the Fishman as well. Doesn't have the damage by himself. That's when Nightfall is potentially able to come into play with the waveform over the top. Nightfall should be able to deal with the Bane relatively easily. As Pure has been held back for the moment as well. It's a three calls on Entity. Can they continue to take the fight? They've still got doom. the Winter's Curse, but Pure, he's still got the Doom as well. Fishing. And if he's open, praying that Watson reveals himself. GPK now finds the opening for the toss back. They'll use it onto the Medusa with the instant buybacks there for Katomi, but look at Watson. He gives no cares. Stand strong in the middle. Meanwhile, Katomi hooks Pure. Toby's got the curse as well. Who cares about the Doom? Watson too strong. And they don't have a way to address him at this stage of the game. Yeah, I'm not sure Medusa's necessarily the ideal Doom target. It's it's okay like when you can kill her and stop her, maybe casting like you know, you're really just stopping like a mystic snake, but like the Wyvern and what he's offering and the spell casting is definitely makes, I think, Wyvern a more appealing target there. So in the end, a, a great fight for Entity. It started off looking a little bit dubious there. They didn't, it took a long time to finish off the Coddle and they kind of paid a bit of a price for it. So when the Bedroom were chasing with Doom back online, really felt like things were gonna go well there, but they just couldn't quite get that kind of clean catch there. And a desperation Doom on Medusa was not enough. <laughs> this scepter now for Poby is it's going to further help out with his positioning a lot like we, we, we've seen multiple good curses from him but now having that free path and consistently is going to make it that much easier for him to be able to play these team fights yeah it, it's such a nice pickup when you're you know against heroes like a couple of melee cores and the tiny and the doom it just feels like we've seen how they, they, it really feels like they're trying to prioritize the jump on the wyvern there but they kited the doom so well the medusa manta illusions were stopping his blink keeping him at bay the wyvern slow so just being able to outrange everybody including the morphling jpk that's a pretty big target okay. can they blow him up yep. though storm stormer he's gonna buy back and he's gonna use it into wait he got glimpsed back Oh my lord, he's still okay though. An incredible curse over to the right side. Nightfall tries to get some separation, but they're on the prowl. Storm Stormer gets the 
knocked back on the stairs. A little bit awkward with the rolling thunder. Nightfall oh, is completely stuck. out of mana. This is not the fight that Betboom were hoping for. GPK is going to try and do his best to turn around the diebacks there on Stormstormer. But GPK will not escape to tell the tale. It's all on Nightfall. What can the Morphling do? Looks to try and enter the fight, but going down the stairs where Entity is set up, it's going to be a difficult call for them to make. They are not playing with any ultimates, nor are Entity. Yeah, this Morphling's just damage into the Medusa with the, the Butterfly. It just feels like there's, there it just isn't damage. And that's a big problem. Like, they bring down the Pengo a couple of times there. The Pengo is really struggling to play around the terrain there. Got caught. They have so much vision. Wait, Toby, times. they see the, the trees. Dude. Yep. And the hook's off the mark as well. Katomi needs it, the dismember to potentially protect him. He'll buy him some valuable seconds, but now all our attention is on Watson to turn the fight back around. This is Medusa's still got plenty of mana to be able to work with and the damage as well. But can he go through all the Bet Boom members as Nightfall? He's able to get the waveform up the stairs. He's okay for the moment. Entity will not be able to continue the chases, especially with the Toby buyback. They will buy some respect, but. A bet boom, they can chill out. GPK's up in a couple of seconds. You know there's no buyback for both the Pango and the Pudge, so you will have a numbers advantage shortly. Yeah, bet boom want to force this and not give up Roshan. They want it for themselves. Hobie, that's a huge kill. What can Fishman do? What can Watson do as well? He's still got the Stone Gaze ready to go. We we'll use defensively to buy some time. Once again, it's a great curse. It'll give Toby a little bit of space to reposition. Now Watson's in with the damage as well. Look at the finishing blow onto G. BK, but Watson starting to lose his mana. Nightfall just solely bringing down the Medusa. Stormstorm is going to try and TP in, but I don't know the Pango is going to be enough to keep him alive. It's a long TP at that. And now Stormstorm might be in some trouble, but they need a way to stop the Fiend's Grip. That's where Nightfall comes into play. It's a pretty decent position, though, for the Rolling Thunder. Multiple wards for Stormstorm to bounce back on. Is the Glimmer Cape enough to keep the Doom alive? It looks like it's not the case. And now with the respawns, they're starting to come up. Katomi is going to be there in a couple of seconds, but Nightfall against the world. They don't have a Morphling answer as Nightfall will reign supreme. A triple kill for the Morphling and some well-deserved tips as well. Oh, Nightfall just plays that fight so beautifully. Just this constant game of in and out. He commits when he's feeling strong. He disengages like around the buybacks and he's now put himself in a position to get an Aegis and Cheese for the team. Just amazing execution on that fight with Betboom. They really just prioritize all the right ta targets, making sure they dealt with the Wyvern and the supports first and then the Medusa last. The vision Parker, that, that really felt like is is what it was in, in that game, uh, in that fight, I should say. Because that lasted for so long. Like, we had yeah. the ward on the, the Twin Gate. I mean, there were two wards they placed there. First one helped them get the initial pick off onto Toby. Then we see the, the one next to the cliff that helped Nightfall continue to chase. Let's just, let's take a look at this one back. Because <laughs> lasted for a very long time. Yeah, I mean, the, the Wyvern's positioning in trees there, just expecting to be initially, like, unseen. But the Doom being able to get a, a Link Doom off on Wyvern is just huge. Like, right there, that's, like, almost the fight just won. And then Entity committing all these buybacks means they've, they're basically committed, like, we have to win this fight now. If you're going to be using these buybacks, it's absolutely disastrous if you don't get these kills. And you see Nightfall there just making all the right moves, gets this, the stun onto the Bane to help out the Doom, keep him alive a little bit longer, and just check, get on top of the back lines. Just killing every single one he sees. Merciless in this fight. What a performance. 10-0 and 4 for Nightfall. Every fight we see him being able to get that Dusa replicate. Engagement looks so goddamn easy for him. It's going to continue to be that case as well. I'm still very impressed with Watson's net worth. But... Yeah, it is a, it's a matchup that favors Morphling. So if, if, it's, if we're solely looking at these two as the game goes on... You've got to be very worried with how they're going to be able to slow down Nightfall inside these engagements. Yeah, he's, dude, he's already at the stage where he wants a, a blessing on the Scepter to free up some spots <laughs> he's that farmed. Yeah, he's like, I no room for boots, no room for eggs. Uh, you know, I, I need upgrades. He's probably thinking Ooh, like, maybe MKB Stormer? comes next. Can they get up to him? Oh, toss back inside the Static Storm, glimpses him out, doesn't matter, a little bit awkward. But it's enough to get the kill. Bet boom. No pango for 70 seconds. They have to compete against. 
So a 4v5. Yeah, we're even seeing some of this damage scaling from other heroes, not just the Morphling, who is an absolute monster here in the late game, but the Tiny there doing big right-click damage as well as what the Doom brings to the table here in the late game. This is this game is not getting any easier for Entity the longer it goes. Oh, it's not. I don't know how Save has a Hex, but apparently he does. And in fact, he's about to be, he's higher net worth than Toby and about to be higher net worth than Storm Stormer as well. So very versatile in his item build and no, they're going to get the reveal of the Hex as well on the Fishman. Top to bottom, they go on Bet Boom to sweep across the map through the Rift and GPK is already looking for more as well. Ever so hungry for these kills. This Ninja Gear, Silver's Edge makes his mobility that ah, goddamn fast. Oh, I won't be home though. So, that boom, they'll get the map in a pretty good position for them to potentially get some objectives though. They're gonna have to play around. Yeah, that, that high ground defense, you know, Pudge Hawks, Winter's Curses, just plopping Medusa on the high ground. Very difficult to actually go high ground if you're Bed Boom here. They'd much rather take a fight on equal terms outside of the Radiant base, but probably not something that Entity is going to oblige with. As For now, Bet Boom may just have to opt to kind of starve them out, sit outside their base, wait for people to leave, and pick off anybody who does leave the Radiant base, because going high ground may put yourself in a bit of, of a vulnerable position. Could they look for like a ward set up on the higher ground into toss back or do you not even want to consider that because that could bait you into a bad fight yeah i i think you can it's just tricky because that commits gpk so he's like blinking into the enemy base which means he's exposing himself and i don't think like if it was a support tiny i think that that works but with a like core tiny with this much farm it gets a little bit dicey potentially but I think the it, it's hard because you know like you already see radiant they have they've got sentries they're going to be pre protecting themselves against those high ground wards well, they definitely don't mind about how the the status of this game is currently you've got pure just deep inside their jungle continued to farm and he's got a spell prism as well so high uptime on the the midas the devour but really the doom is the big one but the thing about the farming game the greatest game from him so far kda wise but of course we're always going to feel the impact out of the doom and he's going to go refresher orb next as well so there is potential for double dooms inside the fights to be able to pretty much cancel out two entity heroes yeah it's the, kind of the problem here in like the super late game which you know 40 plus minutes we're in that ultra late game is at some point the item mass on bet boom is just like how do you beat this like medusa's not the best doom target if she's used stone gaze but you, you can throw a doom at her throw a doom at someone else Morphling and Tiny just start whacking away. You've got a Hex on supports. Like, all these items just add up. Disruptor with a ton of gold as well. But here comes the smoke. They want to force this fight. And see, I think, feeling like they can't just trap themselves in their base and expect to win this one. Storm Stormer will reveal himself. I'll instantly do a quick U-turn away. Try and get the high ground position first. Before the Entity potentially want it. Does mean Bet Boom are going to get the Wisdom Boom, and Entity are not set up for to take Bet Booms as well. So, further advantage in regards to the experience. You have committed very heavily for all your vision down bottom, though, on Entity. So, if you ever try and take a fight on the opposite side of the map, it is going to be very difficult for you to get that set up in your formation. It will go for it, though. Watson, ready to charge in. Haste with the front line. He's going to try and give them the information. Run straight into Toronto, Tokyo. Storm Storm is not going to mess around as well. They'll use the Rolling Thunder, hoping they get an extra plus one. And he will. Beautiful jump down. Storm Storm using the walls perfectly on the Pango. Those two kills just on supports, but they're still vital kills at that. It's going to give them a position now to get the lanes in a great position. Because now we all need to be putting our attention over towards this next Roshan. And even though this game looks really hard for Entity to win, I like what like we're seeing from them, where it's like they're very... They spent the last like minute and a half outside of their base trying to force fights, like trying to fight while there's no 
age is in the picture. They know they don't have the like the greatest kind of control over this game, and they want to get this active vision out. They've got a lot of good wards over their jungle, uh, and they're the ones being proactive here more so than Vet Boom because they're feeling like you know we're on a bit of a timer. We we gotta go and do something. Like our Medusa's not really getting any more farmed. They're scaling on like four heroes. Um, Pango's got kind of everything he needs in terms of items, so. Um, you know, the, the sense of urgency is there and they're making the, the right plays to get out and force these fights. Just two support kills and, you know, unfortunately it's probably not going to lead to an objective with no Roshan alive and the, all their lanes shoved so much on their side of the map. They're just going to be forced to, you know, do some kind of maintenance here and bet boom, get the chance to just kind of reset things. Just, they're setting up for this Rosh though up top, which uh, that's two wards now down and we know how difficult it is to be able to break a formation around these new Roshan areas with the with the pits being on the low ground with the, the cliff you have at the gate so you will be forced for Bet Boom to be able to smoke to enter that area you do have a smoke on Tokyo and it's Whoa, not a fast wow spell, yeah. <laughs> oh wow well, I mean I think either way you know obviously that, that could work in their favor because Bet Boom like, is going to feel pressure. Like, we got to go get over there. Like, we need to be contesting a potential Roshan, but realistically, they've got all the time in the world. They don't have to worry about it at all right now. I do feel like they're still ready to fight, though. Refresher just completed on Pure. No buybacks could be interesting, though. Let's see how important that is going to be as a commodity in this fight. Three buybacks on Radiant, only one on Dire being save. Yeah, I feel like Doom is definitely the the big target to watch in this upcoming fight. Like whether or not he can land these multiple Dooms is going to be crucial for the outcome. And even things like these Static Storms here, Entity trying to play around that high ground. They've got to imagine something's coming their way here, even with Roshan not respawned. Yep. Great scan. They're going to play accordingly. Over to the right side they go. Watson might want to try and poke his head just to give them some information, potentially poke the smoke. GPK is going to go all the way around, cover the silver's Toby's edge. Toby's a bit exposed though. That'd be a really big loss if they lose Toby here, but playing around that Invis. They drop their own board as well for Dyer. As soon as Watson steps down, there could be a consideration for a toss back into the Doom. Let's see if they're set up for it though on Bet Boom. Even Stormstorm is going to show. Instantly, GPK pounces. It's a great curse, so it'll buy some valuable time. The Doom is out onto the Medusa though. Is she able to stay as strong inside the middle of the Fiend script? There's nowhere to address it as Nightfall's in some danger. But a wave form in aggressively with a lot of the damage means they'll get the kill onto Watson. And TD, what can they do? There's a buyback coming in for the Medusa. It's going to take a little bit of time for Watson to get back involved. As this means Nightfall has a free fight. Just tears apart Fishman. Now they're going to go into the northern tree line as well. As there is no escaping the meat grinder. As Nightfall, maybe there is actually Watson. Now that he's finally been able to rejoin the team. That is what they need. The buybacks were ever so vital. But it looks like Nightfall, he's got his own to work with. GPK does a huge amount of damage with the Scepter. Not enough to get the kill onto Toby or Storm Stormer though, but hang on, hang on, Watson. They can't lose Medusa. They cannot at all. He just brought back prior. Watson's going to stand strong, but they won't have Toby. Another buyback out of him, but it's going to take too long. He's got to go bottom into the rift. Watson. What's going on? Nightfall playing aggressively, but the man is completely drained and the health will soon follow as well. It's a dieback out of your main damage source and entity. How can they stand against the Roshan fight now as a 3v5? They've got Winter's Curse back up, but this just feels like a desperation play if you go for this. They're slowly healing up on the Bet Boom side. They got very low. Morphling almost dying a second time and... Ooh. Um, Katomi's up in a couple. Seb's gonna look to try and get the jump. GPK's gonna fall up as well. Instantly towards Toby they go. It's another pretty good curse that enables Toby to reposition over the north, buying some valuable seconds. They'll still get the kill on to save, but it's gonna be a one for one. And he's gonna buy back as well. Katomi, beautiful hook. It's Storm Stormer out of some danger, but it's not going to be enough distance away. Is GPK on the prowl? Can they still be able to secure the kill with the Doom? It's back up on Pure. No escape for you, my good sirs. They are all lacking buybacks. And now Bet Boom, they can do whatever they want. Defend mid, 
get Roche or even push down and go for the finishing blow because Desso is now completed for GPK. Yeah, they kind of say forget Roche and now it's like we've got everything we need. We killed Medusa. It's a dieback on her, dieback on Pango. We can even maybe even go for the throne here. Nightfall gets the Solar Crest. His damage here is just going to be too much. And here we go. He doesn't even go for the rack. Straight onto the Tier 4 Towers. He has his eyes on the prize. He sees a Game 1 victory here. Man, almost got the glimpse. Can you hold 30 seconds? A silicone fence you need to work with. So now, where's GPK for the Deso? He's gonna get recalled in now. I think they're gonna be a small window here. I think this is plenty. Like eight seconds on the punch. Yeah, it's and too with fast. GPK, yeah, this yeah is too it's much. way too much. Toby will need to curse someone, but Pure is just gonna act as a deterrent, putting himself in front of the Winter Wyvern.